Have you ever wanted to place yourself inside a CGI world, just like the pros do it? You've probably seen those behind the scenes shots where actors are surrounded by green or blue screens. Today I'll show you how to bring that cinematic trickery into your own projects, replacing your background with absolutely anything you want. Be sure to stick around because my Master Compositing and Blender course is now fully complete and freshly updated, and I would love to tell you all about it. Green and blue screens are a bit of a staple in filmmaking these days, and the process of removing those screens from the footage is known as keying. This is a core skill of any compositing artist and is utilised in just about every movie and TV show. To do anything from replacing what's outside of a window, to transporting your actors to an entirely different universe. So how do we actually do this? First we will need software that allows us to perform the key. I'll be using Blender for my compositing work, but the general techniques I'll be discussing are useful no matter what software you use. Other programs like DaVinci Resolve, Nuke, and After Effects are great, but you might be surprised to learn that Blender has a broad range of compositing tools as well, and it can do so much more than you might expect. So once you have Blender open, let's head over to the compositing workspace by clicking on Compositing from the tabs at the top of the screen. If you can't find it there, just click on the plus tab, then select VFX, and then Compositing. You can set this workspace up however you want, but I prefer to use a dope sheet panel down the bottom, so I can easily move between the frames of my footage, and an image editor panel up the top, so that my work isn't being covered by nodes, and I have easy access to the mask editing controls, which will come in handy later. We will also need some footage for practice purposes. I'll be using this bit of footage from the Tears of Steel open movie project. You can get the footage from the film's website if you'd like to follow along. A link is in the video description. This is a fairly typical piece of green screen footage, with film crew, bits of filming equipment, and tracking markers on the back wall. We'll worry about that stuff in a moment. For now, let's just focus on removing the green screen from the footage, so that we're capable of replacing it with something else. I'll import the footage by drag and dropping the first frame of the image sequence into the node editor panel, changing the image nodes mode to image sequence, and setting the number of frames in the sequence. I'll just set mine to 100 for the sake of demonstration. Now to actually remove the green sections from the footage, I'll go to the add menu by pressing shift A, then under keying, I'll create a keying node and attach it to the output of the image node. Now all we need to do is set the key color to the color of the green screen so that the node knows what to remove. For this, we will need to be looking at the output of the image node, not the keying node, to ensure that we're getting the color of the green screen without any of the processing that the keying node might apply. So I'll connect the viewer node to the output of the image node. You can do this by holding Control, Shift and left clicking the image node if you're using the built-in Node Wrangler add-on. And now the image editor section should be displaying the original footage. I'll click on the key colors color rectangle here, then select this little eyedropper button. Now we can just select the color from the footage, look back at the keying node output, and BAM! The green sections are gone! Now obviously we don't want all of this extra rubbish in the shot, so how do we isolate the parts that we want, and cut out the stuff that we don't want? This is where a garbage mat comes in. We can create a mask of the stuff we don't want, and Blender will remove those parts along with the green screen. So I'll create a new mask by heading up to the image editor, changing it over to mask mode, then create a new mask, call it garbage mat, and now we can start. In this case, because we're just trying to keep one small part of the footage and remove everything else, I'll create a mask of the guy on the rope, and then invert it later. To create a mask, just hold control and then click and drag with the left mouse button to create a mask handle. Keep making handles to draw your shape, and when you're done, just hold control and left click the first handle you made to complete the shape. You can now easily adjust the handles to make sure the shape is how you want it to be. I'm happy with this shape now, so I'll switch the image editor back to view mode. To get access to the mask in the compositor, I'll go to the add menu again, then under the input submenu, I'll create a mask node. I'll select the garbage mat mask I just made from this little drop down menu, and plug the output into the garbage mat input on the keying node, which can be found in the mask section of the node. It's cut our actor out of the footage, not all this other stuff, and that's because we haven't inverted the mask yet. So I'll head back into the add menu, and from the color submenu, I'll create an invert node, and put it just after the mask node. Huzzah! All of the unwanted rubbish has been removed, leaving our man dangling alone in the void of transparent pixels. For any tracking markers that might be visible inside our masked area, we can remove them simply by adding an extra layer to our mask. So I'll switch back to mask mode, then in the side panel, under the mask tab, we have this mask layers section. The mask layer that's already there is the mask we made before, so I'll rename that to main mask, then press this little plus button to make a new layer. I'll rename the new layer to tracking marker 1, 
and then disable the arrow symbol on the main mask so that we can't accidentally edit the original mask when we're making this new one. Now with the tracking marker layer highlighted, we just make a little mask of the tracking marker. Once that's done, we can cut the shape out of the main one by changing the blend mode to merge subtract. Just like that, the tracking marker is gone. You can do this for any tracking marker or unwanted element in your footage. This video is brought to you by my newly updated and now fully complete Master Compositing and Blender course. If you've ever felt like your renders are missing that final layer of polish, the cinematic glow, the perfect color balance, that depth that makes things feel real, that's where compositing comes in. In the course, we cover everything from keying and color grading to glows to focus effects, render passes and camera tracking, all using free software. No subscriptions, no paid add-ons, just powerful tools and clear guidance. You'll also get free access to a supportive community of students, artists and professionals to help you push your work further. Right now, there's a 20% early bird discount, but it's only available for two weeks after this video goes live. So if you're ready to give your work that final professional cinematic edge, head to the CG Boost website or click the link in the description. I hope to see you there. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with the key itself now, but the way that the keying node handles removing the green bounce light from our actor is a little bit aggressive, and it's left these dark lines around the edges. Removing bounce light from the keyed part of the footage is known as despill. The keying node has some controls for this, but they aren't very comprehensive. Thankfully, Blender has provided another method for doing this that is a lot more flexible. It comes in the form of a color spill node, so let's get one of those from the keying section of the add menu and just connect it to the original footage. You should see all of the green vanish from the scene, but we still have those horrid dark lines. So let's change some settings. The first option we have allows you to select the spill color you want to remove. We're removing green, so I'll leave it on G, but if you're using a blue screen, you can change it to B for a blue or R for red if you're using a red screen for some bizarre reason. Next, we have the algorithm type with a choice between simple and average. I find I get better results from average, but feel free to use whichever you prefer. Factor allows you to mix back the original footage if you want that, and Limit Strength allows you to change the threshold for what it tries to remove. This is essentially what the keying node has for its despill controls. I will not use either of these. Instead, I will activate the Spill Strength option, and then click the little arrow to reveal this color input labeled Strength. This might seem a little vague, so let me show you what this does. If you click on the color rectangle and make sure you're in RGB mode, we can see the amount of impact this node has on each color channel. You can see that it's heavily affecting the green channel, but not affecting the others at all. This might seem right, but what it's actually doing is removing all of the green without replacing it with anything else. The result of that is that anything that was green is now black, or at least much darker than it was before, which gives us these dark lines. What we want to do instead is neutralize the green, making it a nice gray that's roughly the same brightness that the green was. This will remove the green without reducing the light intensity. I find the best way to start here is to set all three of the color channels to the same level. 0.5 is usually a good starting point. Then you can click and drag to select all three values and then drag left and right to move them together. You want to try and find the sweet spot between the footage looking green and looking purple. For me, this is when all of the values are at around 0.45. Notice how the dark lines are gone now? It's also very easy to adjust the color of the bounce light to suit your CGI environment using these channel values. If you're putting him into a desert or a volcano, for example, you might want to raise the red channel and drop the blue channel to make it a warmer tone. If you're in a bluer environment, like a sci-fi lab with LED lights everywhere, or an underwater cave, for example, you can drop the red and raise the blue. Any color that you want for the bounce light is available by adjusting these values. I'll just leave mine fairly neutral for demonstration purposes and leave it at 0.45 for all of them. Now let's apply the despill output to our key. We'll do this by creating a set alpha node, putting the despill output into the image input and the matte output of the keying node into the alpha input. The matte output is essentially just the mask of the keyed elements that the keying node creates, which is very handy for this kind of thing. Okay, great. So now we have the despill colors with the key mask cutting out the actor. This looks a lot better than the image output from the keying node, but we do have a couple of problems. The first of these is a little bit of noise being brought in from the key. It can be kinda hard to spot when looking at the image output, but if you look at the matte output of the keying node, it's quite obvious. This is very, very common, and it's due to the color values not quite being close enough to the key color 
for Blender to remove them entirely. This is an easy fix. We can just open the tweak controls and change the black level until pretty much all of that noise is gone. We can also lower the white point a bit to make sure that the white parts are solid white and our actor isn't transparent in places. Try not to make these adjustments too extreme though, or you'll get an unpleasantly sharp edge on your key. The second problem is this bright edge around the outside instead of the dark ones that we had before. To fix this, we're going to use a process known as edge extension to push those bright edges out into the part of the image that is being cut away by the keying node. To do this, we will need a dilate erode node, another set alpha node, and an inpaint node. First I'll connect it all up, and then I'll explain what each node does in this context. I'll add the inpaint node before the set alpha node that was already there, and then put the new set alpha node before that. I'll change the set alpha node's mode to replace alpha, then connect the matte output of the keying node to the alpha input. Finally, we put the dilate row node on the alpha input line, and we're all set up. Just so that we can see what all of this is doing, I will look directly at the output of the inpaint node. If we increase the size value of the inpaint node, see how the edges of the actor are being extended over the background? The inpaint node uses the alpha channel of its image input as a mask for what to affect, which is why we use a replace alpha node to provide that alpha channel. So using that matte output as a mask for what to affect, it's doing its best to cover up the background up to the distance specified by the size value. The final piece of the puzzle is the dilate road node. See how there's this little line between the actor and the edge extension? This is because the inpaint node is sampling the color at the very edge of the mask, but we want to sample the colors just inside the edge. We can use this dilate road node to suck the edges of the mask in and allow it to do precisely that. So if I set the dilate road node's size value to negative two, see, the line has vanished. Now, as long as the size value of the inpaint node is enough to cover the bright edges we saw before, if we look at the output of the second set alpha node, those bright edges should now be entirely gone. With that, our key is complete, and we can put our actor into whatever environment we can imagine. All we need to do is use an alpha over node to put him over the top of a background. Cool, right? If you found this topic interesting and want to go deeper, I highly recommend checking out my Master Compositing in Blender course. We don't just stop at keying, we cover the entire compositing process and put it into practice with a variety of fully completed composited scenes. The brand new keying update is live now, so it's the perfect time to jump in and take your compositing skills to the next level.